Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the press conference of the Publicity Department of the Central Committee of the CPC. Today, we have of the series China in the Past Decade a press conference with Mr. Huang Liuquan and Mr. Wang Lingui, deputy directors of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office of the State Council, to brief you on the successful implementation of the One Country, Two Systems policy in Hong Kong and Macau since the 18th CPC National Congress. Mr. Huang, please. Friends from the media, good morning. Thank you for your interest in and support for the cause of One Country, Two Systems and the work related to Hong Kong and Macau. This morning, together with Mr. Wang Lingui, I am meeting you all and would like to make an introduction on the implementation of the One Country, Two Systems policy in Hong Kong and Macau. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at his core, has unswervingly, fully and faithfully implemented the One Country, Two Systems policy seizing the historical initiative, actively responding to changes in the internal and external environment of Hong Kong and Macau, and have taken a series of measures that address both the symptoms and root causes of issues. In so doing, it has brought forth the practice of one country, two systems in Hong Kong and Macau and achieved historical accomplishments and brought about historical transformation. First, the theory of one country, two systems has reached new horizons. General Secretary Xi Jinping has put forth a series of new visions, new thinking, and new strategies on one country, two systems, and work related to Hong Kong and Macau, bringing our party's understanding of one country, two systems to new heights. General Secretary Xi Jinping has emphasized that the underlying goal of one country, two systems is to uphold national sovereignty, security, and development interests and maintain the long-term prosperity and stability of Hong Kong and Macau, upholding China's sovereignty, security, and development interests is the paramount principle in the one country, two systems policy. The more firmly the principle of one country is adhered to, the greater advantage the two systems will demonstrate in practice. The central authorities stick to two points in implementing the one country, two systems policy. First, the policy shall be implemented unswervingly without deviating or wavering. Second, the policy shall be applied fully and faithfully without being bent or distorted. It is imperative to run Hong Kong and Macau in accordance with law to ensure the integration of the overall jurisdiction of the central authorities and a high degree of autonomy in the SARs. To implement the principles of patriots administering Hong Kong and patriots administering Macau, to maintain the unique status and strength of Hong Kong and Macau. 
As, administra- as administrators of Hong Kong and Macau, the chief executives and the SAR governments bear the primary responsibilities for administering Hong Kong and Macau. It is important to fully support Hong Kong and Macau in becoming integral parts of the country's overall development and to resolutely forestall and deter the interference of external forces in Hong Kong and Macau affairs. There is no reason to change such a good system of one country, two systems, and it must be adhered to over the long run. These important statements of General Secretary Xi Jinping have enriched and developed the theory of one country, two systems, and provided fundamental guidance for advancing the implementation of one country, two systems in the new era. It is the fundamental reason for the new achievements and developments in the work related to Hong Kong and Macau. Second, the system of one country, two systems has been improved with regard to the serious situation that had occurred in Hong Kong. The CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, decided to step up the centralized, unified leadership of work related to Hong Kong and Macau by the party. They have made the major decision to improve the exercise of overall jurisdiction by the central authorities in accordance with the Constitution and the basic laws over the SARs, and the major decision to improve the systems and mechanisms related to the implementation of the Constitution and basic laws in the SARs. They have established and improved the legal systems and enforcement mechanisms on safeguarding national sovereignty in the SARs, adopted the Hong Kong national security law, improved the electoral system in Hong Kong, and supported the amendment of Macau national security law. All of this have provided solid institutional safeguard for realizing long-term governance and security in Hong Kong and Macau and steady advancement of the implementation of one country, two systems. Third, Hong Kong and Macau have seen steady situation of prosperity and stability with the full support of the motherland. Hong Kong has achieved robust economic growth, maintained its status as an international finance, shipping, and trading center, and its innovation and technology industry has developed rapidly. Its economy is one of the freest and most open in the world, and it boasts a world-class business environment. Hong Kong's pre-existing laws, including the common law, have been preserved and developed. Hong Kong has ranked the top in the world as the freest economy more than 20 times consecutively. And Hong Kong has, over the past decade, achieved the highest IPO volume in the whole world. In terms of international competitiveness, Hong Kong ranks among the top in the world. As for Macau, Steady progress has been made in building it as an international tourism and leisure center, building it as a platform for trade cooperation between China and Portuguese-speaking countries, and as a base for exchanges and cooperation among cultures. Progress has also been made in the proper economic diversification of Macau. It now boasts uh, such flagship impressions as being small yet well-off, robust, prosperous, and beautiful. They have also measures have been taken to address the difficulties of people and to improve their well-being, as well as to boost the undertakings across society. 
Fourth, Hong Kong and Macau have become integral parts of the country's overall development at a faster pace. General Secretary Xi Jinping has personally planned and directed the development of the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, which has achieved important results. The Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong Express Rail and the Hong Kong Zhuhai, Macau Bridge, as well as multiple ports, have been built and have come into operation. Important cooperation platforms, including Hengqing, Tianhai, and Nansha, have also seen accelerated development. The Chinese mainland is becoming more deeply aligned with Hong Kong and Macau, as well as the mechanisms have, th which have also been improved. The flow of production factors is now faster and more efficient, and policy measures have been adopted to facilitate the development of Hong Kong and Macau residents in the mainland. In the great cause of the country's reform and opening up, Hong Kong and Macau have fully leveraged their role as important bridges and windows connecting the Chinese mainland and the world and have made irreplaceable contributions to the miracle of long-term, steady and fast economic development of the motherland. As Hong Kong and Macau have closer contact and bond with the Chinese mainland, and exchanges and cooperation deepen, the national consciousness and patriotism of Hong Kong and Macau compatriots have also been enhanced. In particular, following the challenges, our compatriots in Hong Kong and Macau are now more fully aware that Hong Kong and Macau have always stood together with the motherland, rain or shine, and the bond that links us is truly inseparable. The force for love of the country of Hong Kong and Macau is growing, and the mainstream value centered on a love of our country of Hong Kong and Macau and consistent with the policy of one country, two systems, is more deeply embedded in people's hearts. Hundreds of thousands of Hong Kong and Macau youth have come to study, find jobs, start up businesses, and purchase property in the mainland with a heightened sense of national pride and ownership. These are my introduction. Thank you. Now the floor is open to questions. Please identify your affiliation before raising the question. The successful implementation of one country, two systems in Hong Kong and Macau is an important part of the historical process of achieving national rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. What progress and achievements have been made in this regard over the past decade? I will take this question. This is a very good question, and thank you. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the practice of one country, two systems in Hong Kong and Macau have made new progress and achievements. This is reflected in multiple areas. And here, I will highlight three of them. First, the constitutional order of Hong Kong and Macau SARs based on the Constitution and the basic laws is more solid, and the governance system has been improved. The overall jurisdiction of the central authorities over the SARs have been enforced, and the high degree of autonomy of the SARs have been exercised in the right way. The Hong Kong national security law have been adopted and implemented, and amendment of the Macau national security law has begun, which serves to uphold national sovereignty, security, and development interests. 
the principles of patriots governing Hong Kong and pa- patriots administering Hong Kong and patriots administering Macau have been fully implemented, and the electoral system of Hong Kong has been improved. The democratic system of the SARs have been advanced, which is in keeping with the principle of one country, two systems, and the constitutional status of the SARs, and serves to ensure the democratic rights of the Hong Kong and Macau residents and to maintain the prosperity and stability of Hong Kong and Macau. The Hong Kong and Macau residents enjoy extensive rights and freedoms which are fully protected in accordance with law. Second, the two SARs have overcome various challenges and made steady progress, be it adverse changes in the external environment, serious blow dealt by COVID-19, or some extense intense social upheavals. Nothing has stopped Hong Kong and Macau's advance. In terms of Hong Kong, its status as an international finance, shipping, trading, and aviation center and international aviation hub has been consolidated. The international finance International Innovation and Technology Center, the Asia-Pacific International Law and Dispute Settlement Services Center, the Regional IP Trading Center, and the Cultural and Art Exchanges Center have made smooth progress. In terms of Macau, its economy has grown rapidly. Its regional GDP is among the top in the world. Emerging industries such as MICE, TCM, characteristic finance, and cultural and creative industry are rising. And the proper diversification of its economy is making progress. Social programs, including education, science, and technology, medical health, culture, and sports, have advanced across the board in Hong Kong and Macau. They are seeing increasing exchanges with the rest of the world and rising international influence. Third, Hong Kong and Macau have developed together with the Chinese mainland with complementary strengths and have become integral parts of the vast journey of achieving the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. They have actively aligned with national development strategies and exchanges and cooperation with the Chinese mainland have expanded across the board and the corresponding mechanisms steadily improve. Strengths such as a high degree of freedom and openness and compatibility with international rules have been fully leveraged, and the two SARs have played important roles in advancing the new paradigm of China's opening up on a larger scale across more areas and in greater depth. Hong Kong has always been the greatest source of external investment for the greatest destination of external investment and the greatest entrepôt of external trade for the mainland. And Macau has become an important platform for two-way opening up, especially for economic and trade exchanges with Portuguese-speaking countries. In the great historical process of national rejuvenation, the two SARs have and will continue to make great contributions. Thank you. My question is, the decision of the CPC Central Committee on some major issues concerning upholding and improving socialism with Chinese characteristics and modernizing national governance system and capacity of the fourth plenary session of the 19th CPC uh, National Congress um, 
have put forth uh, upholding and improving socialism, uh, the one country, two systems. What progress has been made in this regard? Thank you for your question. Since their return to the motherland, Hong Kong and Macau have been reincorporated into China's governance system. They abide by one country, two systems, and they have maintained long term prosperity and stability. It is a notable strength of our country's system and governance system. The central authorities have unswervingly, fully, and faithfully implemented the one country, two systems principle. By unswervingly, we mean that there is no deviation or wavering. By fully and faithfully, we mean that there is no distortion. The central authorities always run Hong Kong and Macau in accordance with law and uphold the constitutional order established by the Constitution and the basic laws, and we have improved the relevant mechanisms. For a period of time, due to complex factors, Hong Kong had faced a serious situation. The CPC Central Committee emphasized that we must unswervingly, fully, and faithfully implement the one country, two systems policy, adhere to and improve the system of one country, two systems. Following the top-level planning, and decision of the fourth plenary session of the 19th CPC National Congress, the National Security Law of Hong Kong was adopted, which filled the loophole in their previous system and have become an important milestone in the implementation of one country, two systems. The Office for Safeguarding National Security of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong SAR has been established in accordance with law. And for Hong Kong, the Committee for Safeguarding National Security and a National Security Advisor have been set. For Macau, it has established the positions of National Security Affairs Advisor and National Security Technical Advisor. The institutional mechanism for the chief executives to take due responsibility to the central authorities have been improved. We have supported Hong Kong and Macau in developing their economy, improving people's well-being, and enhancing the national consciousness and patriotism of Hong Kong and Macau compatriots. We have resolutely forestalled and deterred the separatist, subversive infiltration and sabotage activities of external forces in Hong Kong and Macau affairs. All of these important measures have adhered to and improved the system of one country, two systems, and provided a solid foundation for the steady advancement of one country, two systems. All the years, the central government have repeatedly emphasized on the importance of fully and accurately implementing the one country, two systems, and patriots, patriots administering Hong Kong Macau, how to understand this emphasis. One country, two systems is a complete system. To fully and faithfully implement the principle of one country, two systems, the key is to have an accurate understanding of the relations between one country and two systems. Defending national sovereignty, security, and development interests is the top priority of one country, two systems. And with this as a prerequisite, Hong Kong and Macau can keep the previous capitalist systems on change for a long time and enjoy a high degree of autonomy. Socialism is a basic social system of the People's Republic of China, and the leadership of the CPC is the defining feature of socialism with Chinese characteristics, and therefore, Residents in the SAR should respect and uphold the country's fundamental system. The central government's overall jurisdiction over the SARs underpins their high degree of autonomy.
中央充分尊重和坚定维护，特别是这个区域，依法享有的高度自治权。在这个原则之下，一国原则愈加坚固。Under this principle, the more firmly the one country principle is upheld, the greater strength the two systems will be unleashed for the development of the SARs. It is a universal political rule that a government must be in the hands of patriots. There is no country or region in the world where its people will allow an unpatriotic or even treasonous force or figure to take power. Therefore, to ensure Hong Kong and Macau are administered by patriots is an essential requirement to guarantee long-term stability of Hong Kong and Macau and safeguard the interests of Hong Kong and Macau residents. The SAR governing teams must be patriots who are firm, caring for the people, widely supported, and responsible. For Hong Kong and Macau residents, Regardless of their occupation or belief, if they truly support one country, two systems, love Hong Kong and Macau, and observe the basic law and SAR regulations, they are the positive force who can truly contribute to the development of Hong Kong and Macau. Thank you. Next question, please. 东区吧，第三排内侧那位女士。谢谢主持人。新加坡联合早报记者提问。From 联合早报。中国2020年在香港实施国安法。In 2020, China implemented a national security legislation in Hong Kong to stabilize the situation, but some believe that Hong Kong is becoming a second mainland. This will affect Hong Kong's status as an international financial hub, in particular after the pandemic. Because of some regulations from the mainland, Hong Kong's link with the world has been affected. How do you see that? Thank you. I will answer this question. I think that protecting the in my opinion, upholding national sovereignty is a common practice for countries around the world. It is hard to imagine if any country would allow words or actions that subvert the national government or serve to divide the country. So everyone can see that the whole world as we've all seen, countries around the world have their own national security law. I wonder if you've read Hong Kong's national security law. As I see it, it is no different from the national security laws of countries around the world be it the purpose of the legislation or otherwise. Some people claim that Hong Kong is becoming a second mainland due to the national security law. I think these are politically biased observations. Facts have shown and polls have shown that as high as 71.9% of those interviewed find that the implementation of the Hong Kong national security law have helped restore legal order in Hong Kong, tranquility for the people's lives, and improve the business environment. They find that the implementation of the Hong Kong national security law have bolstered their confidence in one country, two systems in Hong Kong. 
As we all know, this year's meeting celebrating the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland, General Secretary Xi Jinping emphasized that we must maintain Hong Kong's unique status and strengths. The central authorities are the same as the Hong Kong residents. Very much value the strengths unique to Hong Kong, namely enjoying the backing of the motherland and staying connected to the world. They support Hong Kong in consolidating its status as an international financial shipping and trading center and uphold its free, open, and efficient business environment. Supports Hong Kong in retaining the common law system. So we believe that as an international metropolis, the vitality of Hong Kong will only continue to be the admiration of the world. As for COVID-19, and the issue of connectivity and flow of people. At present, COVID-19 is still spreading around the world. It has and is continuing to profoundly impact and change the way the world connects and interacts, including for Hong Kong. I have noticed that the new SAR government has repeatedly emphasized that connection with the world, that, that there isn't a conflict between connection with the world and with the Chinese mainland. And the SAR government has, in light of the changing situation of COVID-19 in Hong Kong and around the world, as well as the realities of Hong Kong, pursued both COVID containment and economic and social development. They have fine-tuned and improved the containment measures accordingly. I think the adjustments made by the SAR governments, I don't see any problems to them, and I don't see the need for over-interpretation. Next question, please. Last year, a white paper was released on the democratic process of Hong Kong and amendments made to the electoral system. Can you brief us on the position of the central authorities? I will take this question. Democracy is a common value of the whole of mankind and an important vision of the CPC and the Chinese people. One country, two systems, patriots administering Hong Kong and a high degree of autonomy are important manifestations of the democratic vision of the CPC. Before its return to the motherland, Hong Kong had no democracy to speak of. After its return, our compatriots in Hong Kong have become masters of their own destiny and thus began true democracy in Hong Kong. The CPC is the designer, the person who establishes the upholder and the, advance, the um, builder of Hong Kong's democratic system. It has always supported the SAR in developing democracy in accordance with law and in an orderly manner. Due to the anti-China destabilizing elements, democracy in Hong Kong have been repeated, had repeatedly suffered setbacks, and there were major flaws and loopholes exposed in Hong Kong's electoral system. 
Thus, in 2021, the CPC Central Committee decided to improve Hong Kong's electoral system. The three elections have manifested the notable strengths and uniqueness of the new election system. First, it is broadly representative. The election committee has seen its membership grow from 1,200 to 1,500. The members of the Legislative Council from 70 to 90. The backgrounds of the candidates are unprecedented in terms of their diversified backgrounds. Second, um, they are politically inclusive. The candidates represent different political groups and parties and have different positions on the political spectrum. They have different visions. They come from a diverse background. Third, they have ensured balanced participation. The election committee have seen its four sectors grow to five and membership of the Legislative Council divided into three parts. The candidate for the chief executive must have the support of no less than 188 members of the election committee and no fewer than 15 members from each sector. Fourth, they have guaranteed fair competition. The candidates compete with each other in terms of their expertise, political program, vision, and contribution, thus striving to win the support of the people. The elections are more rational, fair, and orderly. We can see from these features that the new system ensures reflection of the will of the people and pulls the wisdom of the people, and it serves the benefit to the, of the people. It is broad-based, genuine, and effective democratic system. So you can see the position and attitude of the central authorities on Hong Kong's democratic progress. It is clearly reflected in the new system and its successful implementation. Here I'd like to note that the election is not all there is to democracy. The Constitution and the Basic Law have comprehensively established Hong Kong's democratic system. The Constitution has made clear that the central authorities steer and determine the democratic development uh, of Hong Kong. It is a constitutional responsibility, and the basic law stipulates the uh, content and the, the pathway of future development for the democratic system of Hong Kong and provides the Hong Kong residents with extensive democratic rights and freedoms. The democratic system of Hong Kong is consistent with the policy of one country, two systems, and Hong Kong's constitutional status and serves to maintain the democratic rights of Hong Kong residents and the long-term stability and prosperity of Hong Kong. It is showing bright prospects. Thank you. My question is, recently, Canada's Fraser Institute released the Economic Freedom of the World 2022 Annual Report. Hong Kong has again ranked the freest economy in the world among 165 economies, but the report points out that following the enactment of the Hong Kong National Security Law, um, Hong Kong's economic freedom has been affected. What is your response? I have read the report that you mentioned recently. There have also been similar reports over the past period of time. Judging from the reports, I feel that Hong Kong, as the freest economy in the world, and the most competitive, re competitive region in the world has been widely recognized by the international community. This shows that the international community has all along fully commended the unique status and strengths of Hong Kong and stayed confident in its development. The implementation of the Hong Kong National Security Law, as I mentioned, 
is for the purpose of restoring the legal order of Hong Kong and to bring its development back onto the right track. So that the market and the investment environment of Hong Kong can be better protect, protected and investors around the world will see their legitimate rights and interests in Hong Kong better protected as well. It is hard to imagine that if the violent smashing, grabbing, burning can create any good invest business environment, so to speak. In just two years, following the adoption of the Hong Kong National Security Law, Hong Kong residents' confidence and global capital's confidence in Hong Kong has continued to rise. International institutions and the business community have a positive evaluation of Hong Kong's business environment. Hong Kong's Global Financial Centers Index has risen back to third place in the ranking, and the asset and wealth management volume of Hong Kong by the end of 2021 reached 35.55 trillion Hong Kong dollars. Growing over twofold compared to the end of 2019. In July this year, the deposit in Hong Kong banks exceeded 15 trillion Hong Kong dollars, which is compared to three national security law days up 8.5%. In March this year, the International Monetary Fund praised the stability of Hong Kong's financial system and again commended Hong Kong's status as a major international financial center. In addition, the vibrant activities of business in Hong Kong are continuing to grow, which speaks to the region's good business environment or unimpeded environment. And I have some figures for you in this regard. In 2021, companies whose parent company is in the Chinese mainland or overseas, have reached 9,049, which is a historical high for Hong Kong. In the first half of 2022, 50,087 companies in total have been established in Hong Kong, and the number of new businesses is steadily growing. All these Facts fully show that the Hong Kong national security law not only does not undermine the economic freedom of Hong Kong, but on the contrary, provide solid institutional safeguard for maintaining Hong Kong's long-term prosperity and stability and consolidating its competitive edge. Thank you. South China Morning Post. I wonder if the Chinese central government worry about the migration wave in Hong Kong. In last year, over 110,000 residents left Hong Kong, resulting in a 1.6% decline in population. Many Hong Kong residents participated in other countries' immigration programs. 
uh, so I wonder how does the central government expect the current chief executive to keep the talents of Hong Kong and other countries in Hong Kong? Thank you for your question. I read a similar report on Hong Kong newspaper. Many people are concerned about the migration wave in Hong Kong. And the, the number you cited also appeared on Hong Kong newspapers. As this is part of my portfolio, so I also took note of those figures. I also went through the statistics of the Hong Kong SAR government census and statistics department, and I noticed that the number you cited is also from the report of that department. And if I may, I will go through all the other statistics in that report released by the Census and Statistics Department of the Hong Kong SAR government. The report pointed out that the provisional estimate of the Hong Kong population was over 7.29 million at mid-2022, over 7.18 million were usual residents and over 109,000 were mobile residents. From mid-2021 to mid-2022, the total population was 1,083,000. There was an inflow of over 18,000. And a net outflow of uh, over 113,000 of Hong Kong residents with over 35,000 newborn babies and over 61,000 deaths. The number have proved that there are multifaceted reasons resulting in the decline of population. And also on the official web website of the Hong Kong SAR government, a spokesperson stated that the SAR government does not have direct statistics on immigration of Hong Kong residents. As an international city, Hong Kong's population has always been mobile. During the past decade, Net outflows of Hong Kong residents other than one-way permit holders were recorded for most of the years. So from the report and the explanation of the spokesperson, there is not enough evidence to say that Hong Kong is experiencing a migration wave. We often say that Hong Kong is entering a new phase of becoming more prosperous from disarray to new governments. The confidence in Hong Kong's future is stronger. And the central government will continue supporting Hong Kong to have wide and a close exchange and cooperation with mainland and the wider world. I also recently took note the response of the government spokesperson of Hong Kong SAR government. 
He said that the SAR government will continue to attract talents from home and abroad to settle in Hong Kong and to promote the flow of talents within Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. The Hong Kong SAR government has taken a very active posture to attract talents from around the world. We believe that with such a highly free, open and orderly business environment, smooth and convenient international links, a common law system and low tax, and accommodative cultural environment, and the unparalleled geographical location that close to mainland and connected to the world, Hong Kong, will definitely attract more talents to Hong Kong to fulfill their career and life. Thank you. Next question. Uh, thank you. A question from uh, Bloomberg. Um, if a decision to extend one country, two systems past 2047 in Hong Kong was made, what would such an extension mean for Hong Kong's future? Thank you. Please. <coughs> Thank you very much. And one country, two systems is a principle that will be adhered in China. In his address at the meeting celebrating the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland, General Secretary Xi Jinping has made clear that there is no reason for us to change such a good policy as one country, two systems, and we must adhere to it, adhere to it in the long run. Before this year's July the 1st, there may have been some worries or speculations about one country, two systems in Hong Kong and Macau or the international community. I don't think the worries and speculations are still out there, as General Secretary Xi Jinping has given the important address. It is no longer a question. One country, two systems is an innovation of the socialism with Chinese characteristics. It's the best system to safeguard Hong Kong and Macau's long-term prosperity and stability since their return to the motherland. As an unprecedented endeavor, one country, two systems has evolved from concept to real practice, from implementation to improvement. It has withstood the test of a host of risks and challenges and has won wide recognition. Since the CPC's 18th National Congress, under the guidance of General Secretary Xi Jinping and the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee, Hong Kong has achieved the major transition from disarray to good governance. And Macau has maintained its good momentum of stable growth. It has been proved that Hong Kong, one country, two systems, is a good system that works and works well and has the support of the people. China's national rejuvenation has entered a historical process that is irreversible. To advance the successful practice of one country, two systems in Hong Kong and Macau is an important part of the process. We believe that with the firm support of the motherland and the safeguard of one country to systems on the new journey to achieve the second centenary goal, Hong Kong and Macau will score even greater success and will be together with the rest of the people of China to enjoy the glory of China's national rejuvenation. Thank you. Last question, please. Thank you, Mr. President. 
。呃，现在香港正在经历由乱极致到由治极性的新时期，呃，那么香港市民也热切期望，呃，当地的政府还有政府悬殊，今天发展成为一个新的新时期，能够得到切实解决。Of the problems such as land and housing, wealth gap, and youth development, how will the central government support Hong Kong to resolve those problems? 好，我来回答你的问题。Thank you for your question. General Secretary Xi Jinping cares much about the interests of the Hong Kong residents, and in his address at the meeting commemorating the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland, he pointed out that currently the biggest aspiration of Hong Kong people is to lead a better life, in which they will have more decent housing, more opportunities for starting their own businesses. Better education for their children and better care in their twilight years. General Secretary Xi Jinping hopes that the newly inaugurated Hong Kong SAR government be pragmatic, live up to what the people expect of it, and consider the expectations of the whole society, particularly ordinary citizens, as what it should accomplish for most. It should be more courageous and adopt more efficient measures to overcome difficulties and forge ahead. And it should make sure that all citizens in Hong Kong share more fully and fairly the fruits of development. He also pointed out that we must help young people with their difficulties in studies, employment, and purchasing of housing, so that more opportunities will be created for their development and accomplishment. We are pleased to see that the new SAR government has already taken action. They have established a land and housing supply coordination unit and a public housing project action working group to seek multiple solutions to land and housing issues with faster speed. Better efficiency and greater quantity. The new SAR government has also set up task force to lift underprivileged students out of intergenerational poverty to help young people climb up the social ladder. The measures all testify to the SAR government's reserve and sense of resolve, resolve and sense of responsibility. Over 80% of residents being surveyed have confidence in the delivery of the work of the Hong Kong SAR government. Meanwhile, we must realize that the issues you put forward has been accumulated through years. They cannot be addressed overnight. And with single effort, they will be solved with progressive steps through greater development. Next, the central government will continue to fully support Hong Kong in seizing the historic opportunities provided by national development, in fostering synergy with the national strategies such as the 14th Five-Year Plan, Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, and high-quality Belt and Road development. Fully support Hong Kong in keeping and leveraging its unique strengths to have more. Closer and wider exchanges with the rest of the world, and fully support Hong Kong in proactively and prudently advancing reform, so as to fully unleash the enormous creativity and development vitality of the Hong Kong society. I believe that with the firm support of the central government, the leadership of the chief executive, and the Hong Kong SAR government. The Hong Kong residents, through hard work, will sure enjoy greater prosperity and live a happier life. Thank you. Uh, the last two questions. From Macau Daily. Due to the pandemic, Macau is facing multiple difficulties in development. How will the central government support Macau? And what is the progress of central government's emphasis of supporting Macau's appropriate economic diversification? 
回答你的问题。新冠肺炎疫情目前在全球持续的蔓延。The pandemic is raging globally, and do 产生了严重的影响。Seriously undermining the economic and social development of all. 不可能，这个置身事外。Macau is no exception. 经过这一次疫情的话呢？ Through this pandemic, all sectors in Macau are more aware of the problems in Macau's economic structure and have a clearer understanding of the future path identified by the central government. 一直以来 ，the central government highly values and keeps pushing for an appropriate diversification of Macau's economy. In December 2019, in his address to the meeting commemorating the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to motherland, General Secretary Xi Jinping said that. What is particularly important is to ensure good collaboration with Zhuhai in developing Hengqing, which will create immense space and new momentum for Macau's long-term development. In September 2021, the overall plan of building the Guangdong-Macau in-depth cooperation area in Hengqing was published, meaning this cooperation area has entered a new stage of full implementation and accelerated progress. Now, this it has been one year since the implementation of this overall plan, and we have achieved quite significant progress. The central departments and the Guangdong provincial government have rolled out detailed measures to support the development of industry, science, technology, talent, and finance. And with the firm support of the central government, the Macau SAR government has advanced the appropriate diversification of its economy. In my opening remarks, I also said the. I also mentioned the progress in this respect. For example, industries like. Conventions and exhibitions, traditional Chinese medicine, and Macau-specific financial services are emerging, contributing growing share to Macau's GDP. It has further cemented its status as an important center, platform, and base. It is known to the world as the International Center for Food and Leisure. And steady progress has been made in building Hong Kong as a commercial and trade cooperation service platform between China and Portuguese-speaking countries. Fruitful outcomes have been born by building Macau into a base for exchange and cooperation among different cultures. Indeed, the pandemic has dealt a heavy blow to Macau, in particular to its economic and social development. But the fun economic fundamentals of Macau remain unchanged and positive. We believe that with the firm support of the central government and the leadership of the chief executive and the Macau SAR government, Macau will better leverage its unique strengths 
and continue making new endeavors to improve people's livelihood and improve Macau's economy. The central department will respond to the calls of the Macau SER government and give supportive policies to deepen the building of the cooperation area in Hongqing and other areas. Thank you. Xinhua News Agency. What measures have been taken by the central government to support Hong Kong and Macau in integrating to the national development? What has been the progress? Now, what are the future measures? Thank you. Thank you for the question. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area is a new measure in the new era to boost all round opening up and a new practice to develop the one country, two systems. One important purpose of building the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area is to further support Hong Kong and Macau to integrate into national development, improve the well-being of Hong Kong and Macau residents, and safeguard the long-term prosperity and stability of Hong Kong and Macau. In 2019, the CPC Central Committee and the State Council published a guideline on the development of the Greater Bay Area. It has been three years since the launch of the guideline, and with the joint efforts of the central departments and Guangdong, Macau, and Hong Kong governments, the development of the Greater Bay Area has produced significant outcomes. First, the building of major cooperation platforms has exhilarated. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau in-depth cooperation zone in Hongqin has crafted a new system to promote benefit sharing and joint management. Twelve channels to dovetail rules and mechanisms have been formulated. The Qianhai, Shenzhen, Hong Kong Modern Service Industry Cooperation Zone has expanded its coverage geographically and functionally. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau Comprehensive Cooperation Demonstration Zone in Nansha has further upgraded hosting nearly 3,000 companies from Hong Kong and Macau. Second, the building of International Innovation Hub has advanced steadily. The International Technological Innovation Center in the Greater Bay Area has basically completed is framework building consisting two corridors, namely Guangdong, Shenzhen, Hong Kong corridor and Guangdong, Zhuhai, Macau corridor, and two points, namely Hetao district in Shenzhen and Hengqin district in Zhuhai. The Greater Bay Area Academician Alliance has been established in Hong Kong. About 20 national labs in Hong Kong and Macau on brain, on brain science, smart city, and Internet of Things have deepened their cooperation with the mainland. Third, the interconnectivity between Hong Kong and Macau and the mainland has made new headways. A group of world-class airports, airports, and a new infrastructure system have been built with a faster speed. 
the Guangdong Shenzhen Hong Kong High Speed Rail and the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge have entered operation. Progress has been made on building a greater Bay Area on tracks. Traffic among major cities in the greater Bay Areas has been reduced to less than one hour. The cross-border flow of people, traffic, goods, and capital has become more convenient and efficient. The ports at Liantang, Xiangyuanwei, Hengqin, and Qingmao have opened. Juxtaposed controls and other facilitative measures for quick customs clearance have been implemented. Fourth, more measures have been adopted to facilitate Hong Kong and Macau residents' life and work in the mainland. Mutual recognition of professional qualifications has covered more areas. Better support has been provided to Hong Kong and Macau young people on employment entrepreneurship and exchange and cooperation. Hong Kong and Macau residents have easier access to old age care and social insurance in the mainland, and their life in the mainland has become more convenient. Looking forward, the central departments will continue to support Hong Kong and Macau to leverage their special strength and offer more support for the development of the International Technological Innovation Center, the integrated development of the Greater Bay Market, and the building of major cooperation platforms in the Greater Bay Area. Thank you. I would like to thank the two speakers for their time. Thank you for your participation. That concludes today's press conference. Thank you.